Okay, everyone. So let's start our lesson, or let's start to discuss our lesson for finals. This is the first lesson for finals. So the topic for this uh, day is all about blood. So let's define first what is blood. Blood is a specialized body fluid. It has four main components. That four main components are plasma, red blood, uh, red blood cells, sorry, white blood cells, and platelets. Blood has many different functions also, including transporting oxygen and nutrients to the lungs and tissues, forming blood clots to prevent excess blood loss, carrying cells and antibodies that fight infect infection, bringing waste products to the kidneys and liver, which filter and clean the blood, uh, the blood itself, and lastly, regulating body temperature. As uh, as we know that this main function, or uh, there are main different main different function of the blood. So meaning to say, blood is very important. Why? Because it is const constantly circulating fluid for providing the body with nutri nutrition, oxygen, and waste removal. Blood is mostly liquid with numerous cells and proteins suspended in it. So, that's why it, it, it called blood as thicker than pure water. So, that is the importance or why uh, the blood has its, main, has its own four main uh, no, components at, and has its own many different function because it is very important in your, inside the body. Okay, let's move. So, let's know also the general function of blood blood of the blood as a transportation, regulation, and protection. So, materials transported by blood include nutrients, nutrients, waste, products, gases, and hormones. The blood helps regulate fluid, electrocyte, balance acid, base, balance, and the body temperature. It also protects um, against the pathogen, is provided by white blood cells, and the blood clotting mechanism prevent in excessive loss of blood after injuries. So, this explains on how uh, blood is being functioned as a transportation, regulation, and protection. That is why I've said blood is, uh, is very important inside the body because there are a lot of function, there are a lot of main, uh, different function of the blood, and there are a lot of what they call this process that blood is being involved. Okay, let's proceed. Um, so, now, since we've already done discussing the... Uh, definition and the main function of the blood let's go on on the characteristics of the blood of course in any type of organ uh, organ or in any type of part of the organ in a certain organ system there is so we call uh, characteristics meron tayong tinatawag na characteristics ng iba-ibang parte ng organ na nasa katawan natin so blood has distinctive distinctive physical characteristics Okay, again, as I've said, blood has distinctive physical characteristics or a any kind of organ inside the body has its own characteristics. And one of them is the blood. So, one of the, the distinctive physical characteristics of the blood is amount. Please take note with the different percentage of the blood, uh, that um, particularly in the amount of the blood of a certain person. So, a person has a 4 to 6 liters of blood depending on his or her size of the total blood volume in the human body. Um, it also has 38% to 48% that compose of the various blood cells are also uh, called form elements, also called form elements. The remaining 52% to 62% of the blood volume is plasma and the liquid portion of the blood. So that is the per per percentage pertaining on the amount of the liquid in its um, physical characteristics. So, aside from the amount, also, blood also can be characterized as, as its color. So, color does vary. Yes. At arterial blood is a bright, bright red because it contains high levels of oxygen. Always remember that one. Venous blood has given up much of its oxygen and tissue and has a darker, dull red color. This may be important in the assessment of the source of bleeding. If blood is bright red, it is probably formed a severe artery. And the dark red blood is probably big venous blood. So, meaning to say, if um, the, the, there is a... Um, let's assume that there is an accident, let's say, that pertaining to that that, that accident, ac, ac, accident ay doon sa blood mo mismo or naapektuhan ang blood mo. So, we can identify that if... Um, blood will show as a bright red. It is probably a 
the 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 area na naapektuhan sa body mo is your artery. So meaning to say it's for, it's from a severed artery while if uh, your blood in the time will be dark red blood it is probably a venous blood. So um, literally arterial blood is come from the word um, arteries, your artery. That's why it's called arterial blood. So meaning to say the focus of arteries are the blood vessels that are responsible for carrying oxygen rich blood away from the heart to the body and venous is actually from the root word which is veins our veins and these are the blood vessels that carry blood low in oxygen from the body back to the heart for reoxygenation so that is the differences between arterial blood and venous blood or the arteries and the veins okay let's move forward another distinctive physical characteristics of the blood is a ph pH or let's call it as potential hydrogen. The normal potential hydrogen ratio of blood is 7.35 to 7.45, which is slightly alkaline or, or uh, slightly basic. Um, venous uh, blood normally has lower potential hydrogen than does uh, arterial blood because of the presence of more carbon dioxide. So, let's look forward with this pH scale or potential scale. Potential scale is... Um, the, the 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 numbers here in the pH scale, uh, pH scale or potential hydrogen scale is called as potential hydrogen hydrogen range. So from the range one to set to six point nine, it is acid. From seven point one to eight fourteen, it is alkaline or basic. So seven point zero is actually neutral. So that is how can you read a potential scale by its potential uh, potential hydrogen reach, okay? Aside from potential hydrogen, um, uh, blood can also be characterized on its viscosity. So when we say vis viscosity, this means thickness or resistance to flow. As we all know, blood is about 3 to 5 times thicker than water. Kaya nga, sinabi ko kanina, that is why blood is thicker than pure water because of the means of viscosity and viscosity is increased by the presence of blood cells and the plasma proteins and this thickness contributes to normal blood pressure so um kaya naman no the blood um let's say kaya ang sinasabi dito that blood is thicker than uh, mo five times thicker than water because of the means of physical characteristics like viscosity so literally blood is thick and that's why it resists to flow. So meaning to say, hindi hindi siya hindi siya agad agad or hindi mabalis siyang uh, what do you call this? Nagfo flow, kasi it is thick. Okay. So when we say um, actually thickness, it is a measure of distance between two surfaces of an object. It is usually the smallest of three di dimensions. Okay, so now let's move forward to another slide for another uh, distinctive physical characteristics. So, oh, okay, so that is the last part for physical characteristics. So again, there are four distinctive physical characteristics of the blood. So we can characterize the blood into amount, color, potential hydrogen, and its viscosity. So kindly rem be reminded with this, uh, with this physical characteristics of our blood. Okay, so let's move forward on the topic which is the plasma or the components of the blood so blood plasma is like yellowish liquid component of blood that holds the blood cells of whole blood in suspension it is the liquid part of the blood that carries cells and proteins to out the body it makes up about 55 percent of the body total blood volume so uh, always remember the range of the blood inside your body it has uh, it makes up about 55 of the body total blood volume inside your body ha huh? okay so plasma also is a liquid part of the blood and approximately 91 percent of the water and the solvent ability of water enables the plasma to transport many types of substances nutrients absorbed in digestive tract such as glucose amino acid and minerals are circulated to all body tissues not uh hindi lang yung nagtatapos because pla blood plasma or plasma itself has a hormones produced by endocrine glands that carried 
in the plasma to their target organs um, and antibodies are also transported in plasma so as you can see uh, the the plasma itself has its own co function which can help the blood in circulating inside our body that's why uh, since a uh, plasma has its uh, a lot of function that literally said uh, that literally explain why plasma is the largest part of our body okay so i i hope you have understand what is the function of the plasma and what what can plasma can help in our body okay let's move forward to the composition of blood so as you can see here this is actually an ilu uh, illustration that can uh, give you or that can emphasize the percentage of the composition of the blood so as i've said plasma is the larger largest part of your blood so meaning to say plasma has its uh the first one that has a largest amount number percentage inside your body so plasma is has 55 percent white blood cells and platelet has four percent composition of your of your blood and lastly we have red blood cells that compose of 41 percent of your blood so that is that is Ito, ito ang illustration or did, did, this can explain you about the composition of your blood inside your body. Okay? Let's move forward. Also in the plasma are plasma proteins. The clothing factors or prothrombin, fibrinogen, and other are synthesized by the liver and circulate until activated to form a clot in ruptured or damaged blood vessels. So albumin is the most abundant plasma protein. It is, it is to synthesize by the liver. Albumin contributes to the colloid osmotic pressure of blood which pulls tissues fluid into capillaries. This is important to maintain normal blood volume and blood pressure. Other plasma proteins are called Globulins, uh, okay. Alpha and beta globulins are synthesized by the liver and act as ca carriers of molecules such as fats. That gamma globulins are antibodies produced by lymphocytes. Antibodies, ad, an, i, antibodies initiates the destruction of pathogens and provide us with immunity. So as you can see in this slide, ex, it it explains the plasma proteins, okay. Uh, it signifies or it, it enumerates the following plasma proteins. So, we have albumin and globulin. So, it discuss what are the function of albumin and globulin in this slide. And, and let's now unlock some difficulties in this, in this highlighted, num uh, highlighted words, which, which, has, which means as your terminology in this slide. So, we have... Uh, albumin. So as I've said, albumin is the most abundant plasma protein. Why? Because it is a protein made by your liver. Li liver, sorry. Albumin also helps keep fluid in your bloodstream, so it doesn't leak into tissues. It is also carries various substances throughout your body, including your hormones, vitamins, and enzymes. So that is why albumin has the most abundant plasma protein because there are a lot of function that being um processed by the albumin next to albumin we have also a highlighted words here we have globulin globulin are the group of protein in your blood that are made in your liver by your immune system um it plays an important role in the liver function by the means of blood clotting and fighting infection um there are actually a types of globulin, but I will not discuss it furthermore. So, um, they're called actually alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, and gamma. That is why in the in this part, I've mentioned a gamma globulin in, in antibodies produced by lymphocyte. Why? Because globulin, that is a main types or four main types of a globulin. We have alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, and gamma. Okay. So let's uh, forward now. Plasma also carries body heat. Heat is one of the, one of the byproducts of cell respiration, the production of ATP in cells. Blood is warm by flowing through active organs such as the liver and muscle. This heat is distributed to cooler parts of the body as blood continues to circulate. So this part, this ex this actually explains how plasma 
being a source of unheat, body heat. So, that is one of the function, again, of the plasma. Okay? Let's move to another slide. So, since we've already done discussing plasma, let's proceed now to blood cells. So, blood cells. This is the main function of blood cells also. There are three kinds of blood cells. We have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelet. Blood cells are product from stem cells called hemopoietic tissue. So, literally, when we say hemopoietic uh, tissue, it eventually arises from hemopoietic stem cells. And that's why it also include in your bone marrow, peripheral blood, and certain lymphoid uh, tissue. So, uh, blood is also concerned on producing a stem cells called hemopoietic tissue. So, after birth, this is primarily the red bone marrow found in a flat and irregular bone such as the sternum, hip bone, and vertebrae. Lymphocytes mature and divide into lymphatic tissue. So, as I've said, uh, uh, hemopoietic tissue is uh, coming from uh, or arises from the hemopoietic stem cells that includes bone marrow and lymphoid or lymphatic tissue. So, found in the spleen lymph nodes, and thymus gland. The thymus contains stem cells that produce T lymphocytes and the stem cells in the other lymphatic tissue also produce lymphocytes. So, again, let's unlock some difficult here. Uh, so let's unlock some difficult or vocabulary here from the highlight, highlighted word or terminology in this slide. Okay, let's have uh, red bone marrow. So, I, as I recall, I've already discussed what is red bone marrow, right? With with our topic which is skeletal system so let's move forward with lymphatic lymphatic tissue or and the lymphocytes so literally when we say lymphocyte it is actually a type of a white blood cells that is part of your immune system so that's why lymphocytes is always um, mentioned here because it is a type of a white blood cells that compose of or one of the composition of the blood okay then, aside from lymphocytes, we've also mentioned here lymphatic tissue. What do you think is the function of lymphatic tissue? Lymphatic tissue can organize uh, by the structures that support immune responses. So, um, you can also um, be found, the lymphatic, uh, lymphatic tissue, in the uh, bone, marrow, and thymus are primary lymphoid tissue. So, at the site of lymphocytes development. So, meaning to say, that's why um, um, lymphocyte is being mentioned again with, because the process in lymphocyte is, has an accordance or in the lymphatic tissues or there, there is so-called connectivity between the lymphatic tissue and the lymphocytes. Okay, so that is the explanation between this, uh, the explanation of this slide for the blood cells. Okay, so let's move forward. So, these are the illustration again representing the blood cells. So, again, it, also, it has white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelet because, because that is the three kinds of blood cells. Okay? So, this is uh, uh, actually can illustrate what is the inside of the blood cells. Okay, let's move forward to red blood cells. Red blood cells are also called a also called as erythrocytes or red blood cells or RCB, RBC are biconcave discs which means their centers are thinner than their edges. Red blood cells are the only human cells without nuclei. Their nuclei disintegrate as the red blood cells mature and are not needed for formal function. Aside from that, um, a normal RBC counts ranges from 4.5 to 6.0 million cells per microliter of blood so rbc counts for means uh, for men are often towards the high end of this range those for women are often toward the low end another way uh, another way to measure the amount of rbc is the hematocrit so this explains the function of R rbc in men and women also remember that um, RBC for men are often toward the high end while for women are often toward the low end. Okay? 
so in easy way on how to define red blood cells so the main function of it um to be exact is it is responsible for transporting oxygen from your lungs to your body tissue so you're uh, in that time when when that happened your tissue produce energy with the oxygen and release a waste so it identified as your carbon dioxide so that is the main function of rbc or the red blood cell so let's continue our discussion so the test involved drawing blood into the thin glass tube called a capillary tube and centrifuging the tube to force all the cells to one end the percentage of cells and plasma can then be determined because rbc are by far the most abundant of the blood cells a normal hematocrit range is just like that of the total blood cells 38 percent to 48 percent both rbc count and hematoc uh, hematocrit are part of the complete blood count or cbc always remember with those the range ha huh? please take note with the range of the blood the red blood cells the blood cells the white blood cells and the plate platelets because that is very important in that is very important in this topic because you have to determine also uh, how much is the percent of uh, each type or each kinds of blood composition inside your body okay so let's move forward for the function of the red blood cells red blood cells contains the protein hemoglobin which gives them the ability to carry oxygen each red blood cells contains approximately 300 million hemoglobin molecules and each of which can bond to four oxygen molecules so i will be not reading uh literally the function of it because uh, um it's been written already so you just read what are those function of our bc or the red blood cells so um to explain na lang it more further red blood cells contain the protein hemoglobin and hemoglobin and hemoglobin is a protein in your uh it's it's a protein in your red blood cells nga. it can carry oxygen to your body organs and tissues and transport also carbon dioxide from your organs and tissue back to your lungs so so that is the function of hemoglobin in the red blood cells that is why it called it, it happens that red blood cells contain the protein called hemoglobin so the the, li the list of the statement below is the function of uh, red blood cells so i will not be reading it uh furtherly because it is concept and all of the, the uh, and all of the explanation is there already you just read the function so that is the important part of red blood cells and always remember that red blood cells contain the protein that's why protein called hemoglobin that's why i give emphasis on the term hemoglobin so now let's move forward Hemoglobin is also able to bind to carbon dioxide and thus transport from carbon dioxide from tissue to the lungs. But hemoglobin accounts for only about 10% of the total carbon dioxide that transport. So it's literally most carried in the plasma as bicarbonate ions. What are those uh, production and maturation of a red blood cells? So red blood cells are formed in a red bone marrow. In flat and irregular bones within red bone marrow are precursor cells called stem cells. The stem cells of red bone marrow may also be called hemocyto hemocytoblast, or hemo means blood, cyto means cell, and blast, blast means producing. And they constantly undergo mitosis to produce all the kinds of blood cells, many of which are RBC. So that's uh, why in cell division, we have we have to undergo with the two types of cell division which is mitosis by the means of its um by producing a certain dotal cell in each parent cell and of course we have meiosis also reduces the chromosomes of the parent cell so that's why here in the production and maturation of red blood cells um it oh it only undergo in the process called mitosis because it produces all kinds of blood cells and that all kinds of blood cells are rbc okay or the red blood cell now so now let's proceed to another um statement the rate of reproduction is very rapid estimated at the several um estimated at several million new 
or BC per second. And a major regulating factor is oxygen. If the body is in state of hypoxia or lack of ox oxygen, take note with that, the kidneys produce a hormone called e erythropoietin, which stimulates the red, red bone marrow to increase the rate of RBC production. That is the rate of stem cells to be exact. This will occur following hemorrhage or if the person stays for a time at at a higher altitude, as a result of the action of erythropoietin, more RBC will be available to carry oxygen and correct the hypoxic state. So, this statement lang naman, if the, if the rate of the production has, its, has undergo with the problem, or in the state of hypoxia, or the lacking of the oxygen. So, by that, of course, there is a quite changes in producing the hormone or called erythropoietin so as a result of that um, um, of that action of erythropoietin more are bc will available to carry oxygen and correct the hypos, uh, hypoxic state or the hypoxia or lacking of oxygen so uh, erythropoietin can help on that state if your body uh, has the state of hypoxia or lacking of oxygen okay let's move so this is eventually a summarization lang or uh, uh, some vocabularies or terminologies particularly on the blood so let's ha we have anemia aerodeficiency anemia like that sickle cell like so you can you can eventually read some of this part so this is actually a bonus part or summarization of the the topic not about the topic but it it is a another information about the blood so i will not be in i will not be reading it na because it's all of the discussion all of the explanation is there naman so you just read it what is the function of anemia what is anemia itself or what is the type of anemia yeah okay so let's proceed on another this is another uh information another information to be exact that is uh, connected to a blood yeah and okay so let's move forward to this statement to this another function the norm normal blast is the last stage with the nucleus which then this this integrates the red red t culocytes has fragments of endoplasmic reticulum which are visible when blood smears are stained for microscopic evaluation these immature cells are usually found in the red bone marrow, although a small number of reticulocytes in the peripheral circulation is considered normal up to 1.5% of the total RBC. Large numbers of reticulocytes or norm normoblasts in the circulation blood mean that the number of mature RBC is not sufficient to carry the oxygen needed by the body. Such situation included hemorrhage or when the mature RBC have been destroyed as in RH diseases of the newborn and malaria. Okay? So that explains that the normal blast and reticulocytes has, or when we say normal blast, it is actually in the immature red blood cells that containing heb hemoglobin and pycnotic nucleus. And it is normally present in bone marrow but appearing in the blood uh, in the blood in many anemia so so is normal blast found in circulating blood blood so yes normal blast and immature granulocytes however are less deformable and rarely uh, enter the circulating yes um normal blast has the presence of uh normal blast can be found in circulating of blood but it is actually rare lang so their presence is uh, the focus of the normal blast or its presence is in the peripheral blood means that the bone marrow barrel has been disrupted or the extreme dolary hematopoiesis has been activated. So, that is normal blast. However, we have also mentioned here reticulocyte. So, reticulocyte also is a slightly immature red blood cell. So, it it is count in the blood test that measure the amount of this cell in the blood. The presence of reticulocyte is 
on some anemias also. Um, the body increases production of red blood cells and sends these cells into bloodstream before they are mature. So, uh, normal blast and reticulocyte is both the same regarding with the statement that it is immature red blood cells. But reticulocyte are slightly immature red blood cells. Okay, let's move forward. I hope you understand some uh, functions or the statement that I being explained. Okay, let's move forward with the blood type. So let's now uh, under let's now go or focus on how can we determine our blood type. So the ABO blood types were discovered in the early 1900s by Carl Lanstiner, an Australian American. Actually, it is history. This this, this, this explains the history between uh, how ABO blood types being discovered with the man called. Carl Lanstiner. He he is also contributed to discover of the RH factor in 1940. When we say RH, it is stands for the word resus. R H E S U S. It is actually uh, it is eventually can be uh, inherited protein found on the surface of a red blood cell. So that is RH or RH factor. So, aside from knowing the ABO blood types, Carl also this uh, contributed on discovery of the resus factor. So, when we donate blood today, our blood may be given to recipient as whole blood or it may be separated into components part and recipient will then receive only the part that they need, such as red cells, plasma, factor, eight or platelets platelets each of these parts has a specific function and all of the function of the blood are essential to our soul variable so that is the history between how abo blood types can discover because of the man behind it uh, namely carl landstiner okay not only with that pala uh, Charles Drew also in a, an Africa African American developed techniques for processing and storing blood plasma, which could then be used in transfusion for people with any blood cells. So the blood type. So that that is the process why we have so called we can donate our blood to the others. We can give our blood in the hospital for for them to be the uh, for them to store it uh, to store it kapag may nangangailangan. So that's why. Um, blood can blood um, has its own processes, and by Charles Drew, pwedeng gumawa ng ganyong transfusion because of him. Kung bakit pwedeng yung ta yung ibang tao pwedeng bumigay ng dugo, pwedeng magdonate ng dugo sa iba. Okay, sa ibang tao or pwedeng ibigay ito sa hospital to make it as a reserve once that there is a person na kailangan yon. Okay, let's move forward. Our blood types are genetic that is we inherit genes from our parents that, de that determine our own types. There are many red blood cells factors or types. We will discuss the two most important ones, which is the ABO group and the RH factor. The ABO group contains four blood cells, the A, B, AB, and O. The letters A and B represent as antigens, so uh, please take note with that, or the protein oligo oligosaccharides on the red blood cell membrane a person with type a blood has the a antigen on the red blood cells and someone with the type b has the b antigen and type a b means that both a and b antigens are present and type o means that neither the a nor b antigen is present okay so this uh this statement actually uh, explains the differences between if the if the person has its uh, blood type which is A or blood type a, B or blood type AB or blood type O. So the uh, in all of the all of the what they call this the blood type has its own differences, diba? Has its own um, um, defined antigen. But in the type O, type O means can neither the A nor the B antigen presented. So, it is neither A nor the B. So, that's why in donating the, the donating a blood, uh, blood type O can, can use or 
can donate or blood type O can donate to recipients with blood type A, B, or AB and O. So that's why O is called as the universal donor or donors with O blood are compatible with any other blood type. So, di ba? It's like an immune. Blood type O is immune because uh, it can share to the O blood type. It can share with the blood type A, it can share with the blood type B, it can share with the blood type AB, and it can share also with its own blood type, which is O. Okay, let's move forward to explain it further. Circulating in the plasma of each person are natural antibodies for those antigens, antigens not presented on the RBC. Therefore, a type A person has anti B antibodies in the plasma, a type B person has anti A antibodies, a type AB person has neither anti A nor anti B antibodies, and a type O person has both anti A and anti B antibodies. So, um, if the yung kaninang statement is focused on the antigen, here naman it focus on the antibodies. If the person carries the blood type which is B, it has an anti A antibodies. If the person carries a type a type AB, the person neither can have a anti A nor anti B antibodies. And if the type O can care, uh, uh, if the person carries the blood type which is O, the person has both. Uh, anti A and anti B antibodies. So these natural antibodies are great importance for transfusion or for the donating. If possible, a person should receive. So on donating, on transfusion the blood to another person, this is there are a lot of uh, what they call this um process. Kailangan tingnan if you are compatible with that kind of a uh, blood type. Because you cannot receive a certain blood type if you are not compatible. With. So that's why I've said um, type O is very o, you, immune because it can, it can share its own blood to the other type of the blood type. Hindi mahihirapan maghanap because blood type O can donate to the other, to the other, type, uh, to the other type of the blood which is A, A, B, and O. That's why it's called as the universal blood. Okay, let's proceed. So, these are the illustration, actually the representation on the antigen presented on RBC, antibodies presented in plasma, per, uh, uh, percentage in U.S., particularly in U.S. population ito, from white, black, and Asian. Okay? So, as you can see here, we have type A, B, A, B, and O. So, yan. Yan, I, I actually explained that kanina. Kanina, if you're listening to me. From A to B, A, B, and to O. Okay, so now let's move. So let's move now on uh, discussing white blood cells. So since we have already discussed the blood itself, composition of blood, the plasma, the blood cells, the red blood cells, and of course, let's go on now on white blood cells. So white blood cells or WBC are also called as leukocytes. White blood cells or WBC are also called leukocytes. There are five kinds of WBC. All are larger than RBC and have nuclei when um, mature. The nucleus may be in one piece or appear as a several lobes or segments. Special staining for microscopic examination gives each kind of WBC as distinctive appearance. So to define it furthermore or to give it easy with ECS form of definition when we say leukocyte so again when we say leukocyte or the easiest way to define leukocyte the function of it leukocytes are responsible for protecting your body from infection that's it as part of your immune system white blood cells circulate in your body and responds to your injury or illness kung bakit gumagaling agad or bakit may nagpoprotekta sa atin because of the white blood cells and that is particularly on infection that will be a uh, infection na natatamasa natin on the different illnesses or injury that we have okay let's move forward to have a specific um statement or spe uh, another um, explanation. A, no a normal, this is focused on the counts naman. A normal WBC count, part of CBC, is 5,000 to 10,000 per liter. Notice that microliter. Notice that this number is quite small compared to normal RBC count. Many of our uh, WBC are not circulating within the blood vessels, 
but are carrying out their function in the tissue fluid or in the lymphatic tissue. That's why I've said um, when we say um, WBC, it is responsible only on the protecting your body infection. That's why at uh, uh, with the count itself, makikita natin, we can notice that it is quite small compared to the normal red blood cells. So, this is the exact percentage of or the exact count of WBC inside our body. So, let's, uh, let's now proceed to the classification. So, the five classification of white blood cells produced in the red bone marrow uh, are... Uh, may be classified into two groups. We have granular and agranular. The granular leukocytes are the neutrophils, eosinophils, and the vasophils, which usually have nuclei in two or more lobes or segments and have distinctly colored granules when stained. Neutrophils have light blue granules, eos, uh, eosinophils have red granules, and, by, and vasophils have dark blue granules. The argon Agrinular nucleosides are lymphocytes and monocytes which have nuclei in one piece. Monocytes are usually quite a bit larger than lymphocytes. A differential uh, WBC count part of CVC is the percentage of each kind of nucleosides. Oh, so many so many terminology here. So as I've said, um, um, white blood cells can be classified into two groups. We have granular and agranular. A granular has its own kind. We have neutrophils, eosinophils, eosinophils, and vasophils. So neutrophils um, focuses on focuses on the, the the killing and the digesting bacteria and food drug to help your body fight infection and heal wounds. So uh, that is the focus of neutrophil, uh, neutrophils and not, uh, not hindi lang yan, kundi neutrophils also is, uh, is a part of white blood cells that make up the biggest number of the kinds of white blood cells. That's why in digesting and killing a certain bacteria or fungi, um, neutrophils can help and fight infection to heal the wounds. Okay, so aside from neutrophils, we also have eosinophils. Aosinophils also are the type of disease fighting uh, white blood cells. This condition most often um, indicates a parasitic infection, an aller allergic reaction or cancer. You can have high levels uh, aosinophils in your blood so or tissues that sites of infection or inflammation. Okay, so what happens if our aosinophils counts is high? Ano bang mangyayari? So, it can indicate that our body producing uh, lots of new iso uh, I I I or eosinophils to try to fight a bacteria, virus, or parasite. Therefore, high eosinophils count can be indicated if of an infection. So, if we ha if eosinophils counts is high, meaning to say, it can it can indicate that, or the count of eosinophils can can be indicated if there is an infection or an infection. Yon. So, aside from eosinophils, we also have uh, basophils. So, basophils, is the me uh, this means they have the ability to help and defect and destroy some early cancer cells. Another important function of basophils is that they release a uh, histamine in their granules during an allergic reaction of an asthma, asthma attack. So, this explains on why basophils plays a part of immune surveillance. So, meaning to say, basophils is, serve as your immunity. So, to fight another or to help to detect, destroy early cancer cells or even the infections that you have inside your body. So, now let's move forward. So, this is actually the, 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 the summarization of what I've mentioned a while ago. From the range, the normal range itself. Let's move. So, function of white blood cells. Again, kaya nga paulit ulit. When we say white blood cells, it's provide as your immunity. Why? Because white white blood cells can protect you in in uh, what? Protect you in infection. So, aside from that, it is also capable of the phagocytosis of pathogen. 
or neutrophils and monocytes are capable also in phagocytosis and pathogen. It is more uh, abundant phagocytes, but the monocytes are more efficient phagocytes because they are deficient in macrophages, which also pag, uh, phagocytize uh, dead or damaged tissue at the site of any injury help to make tissue repair possible during an infection. Neutrophils are produced more rapidly and in immature form called band cells. So this is eventually explains the function of neutrophils in the white blood cells. Um, kaya nga sinabi natin kanina that neutrophils has a or the neutrophils has the biggest function of the in the white blood cells because it can help in the different processes during the infection itself neutrophils can produce uh, immature forms and by that it can it can produce a a a cold a band cells okay so that is the function of white blood cells and another function of that um this is particularly on hemaprene and histamine so let's uh, let's let's make it na lang na let's define uh, the function or the process of hemaprene and histamine kasi there, there this this actually the, the, the function itself or the explanation itself is written in the PowerPoint already. Once you've read it, you can eventually understand what I'm talking about. So let's go with the unlocking difficulties or unlock the terminologies that we have. We have hemaprene, hemapar, hema, hem, he, hepa, heparin, sorry, sorry, heparin. So in heparin, or what is the use for hemaprene, hep, hepa Hepaprene. So, hepaprene is prevent or treat a certain blood vessels, heart, and lung condition. Hep hepaprene is also used to prevent blood clotting during open heart surgery and bypass surgery. Kidney dialysis and blood transfusion is also there in hepaprene. So, that's why in white blood cells, it is actually included. So, how does it work? How does the hepaprene work? So, hepaprene works by disrupting the formation of the blood clots in your veins so that is hep heparine so how about histamine so on histamine histamine is a chemical created in the body that is released by a white blood cells so when the immune system defending against the potential al allergen or the infection itself the release can result in allergic reaction from al allergy triggers such as pollen mold and certain foods so what what does histamine do in our body so it boosts the blood flow in the area of your body that allergen affected or the allergy or some infections that you have in the body so what is the help of histamine boost blood flow in that area okay so that is the 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 function again of heparin and histamine in the white blood cells so, we also have some here in the T cells or the lymphocytes help recognize foreign antigen and may directly destroy some foreign antigen B cells. Or B cells can become plasma cells that produce antibodies for foreign antigen. And, of course, the natural kill cells destroy also foreign cells by chemical rupturing their membranes. So, these are the kinds or major kinds of lymphocytes from T cells, B cells, and less humorous third kind called unnatural cells killer cells okay so now let's move forward a high wbc count of leukocytosis is often an indication of infection of leukopenia is a low wbc count so meaning to say this are particularly on the diseases that can be that can have if you have low wbc count so meaning to say if you have that one the very thing or the disease that you will be having is leukemia so, exposure to radiation or to chemicals such as benzene may destroy your WBC and lower the total count such a person is then. So, oh, from the statement itself, no, let's be careful on using some um, cell phones, gadgets that we have. Because in exposure to radiation, eh, that is the one uh, uh, reason why our WBC or our white blood cells can be destroyed. So, hopefully that 
you can manage to use your uh, cell phones or even though your gadgets that you have, sana limitahan nyo lang kasi that is the reason why your WBC count will be low. Okay? So, let's, put, let's move forward on platelets. So, platelets is more formal name for platelets. Uh, platelets is thrombocytes, which are not all cell but rather fragments or pieces of cell. Some of the stem cells in the red bone marrow differentiate into red cells called megacaryocytes, uh, which break up into small pieces that enter circulation. Thrombopiotin is a hormone produced by the liver that increases rate of the platelet. And a normal platelet count from CBC is 150,000 to 300,000 um, L or microlytes. The high end of the range may be extended to 500,000. Thrombocytopenia is termed or a low platelet count. Okay? So what is the function of platelets? So there are uh, uh, some of the function. So platelets are necessary for hemostasis. So which means prevention of blood loss. There are three mechanisms. First is the vas vascular spa spasm. Okay, for vascular spasm, when a large vessel such as artery or vein is severed, the smooth muscle in, uh, in its wall contracts and responds to the damage called the myogenic response. Meaning to say, when you say vascular spasm, or, or uh, it is focused on the narrowing of the arteries caused by the persistent contraction of the blood vessels. So, what can cause a vascular spasm? Okay, it can cause by, of course, tobacco, using cigarettes or drug, especially cocaine, trauma, irritation to the blood vessels, it exposed to cold weather, extreme emotional stress, and inflammation disorders affecting the blood cells. So that is the cause of vascular spasm. Okay. Yeah, so these are the three uh, prevention which means prevention of blood loss. There are three mechanisms. Pa paano? So, first is the, the, the vascular spasm. Okay, next, we have platelet plugs. When capillary is ruptured, the damage is too slight to initiate the, the formation of blood clot. The rough surface, however, causes platelets to change the shape and become sticky. This activates platelets stick to the edge of the break and to each other, the platelets form a mechanical barrier or a wall. And meaning to say platelet, when we say platelet plug or also known as the hemostatic plug, these are the platelet thrombus. It is an aggregation of the platelets formed during early stage. So what is, uh, what, the, what is actually uh, the differences between platelet plug and blood clot? Platelet plug is formed and external bleeding stops. Next, small molecules called clothing factors cause strands of blood bone materials called fibrin to stick together and seal the inside of the wound. Eventually, the cat blood vessels heals and the blood cloth dissolve after a few days. So that is the differences between blood plug and blood clot. Always remember that blood plug form in the external bleeding when the external bleeding will stop and small molecules called clothing factors cause strands and uh, and bone materials called fibrin and to stick together uh, to stick together to seal the inside bone so that is the platelet plug however the blood uh, the blood cloth is uh, the cut blood vessels and when uh, when there is a cut in the blood vessels and heals it became in it became blood cloth dissolves it dissolves actually after a few Takes. Okay, so chemical clothing. It is the stimulus for clothing is rough surface within the vessels or a break in the vessels which also creates a rough surface. The more damage there is, the faster clothing begins usually within 15 to 120 seconds. So these are some of the processes that in, in the prevention on how can we prevent. Um, there, these are the three mechanisms on how can we prevent. Prevention of blood loss. Okay, yeah. So uh, by the the function itself, it explain everything. No, from the process itself. 
So there is no more so much ano explanation be behind that one. Okay? So this is the uh, illustration again, the summarization between the chemical clothing itself. From the clothing stage to the factors needed to the reaction. Okay? Let's move forward. Another forms elements of the blood. Another uh, summarization from the red blood cells to the platelet itself. So I already discussed this one. I already mentioned it a while ago. Okay? So just uh, read it and uh, just remember and take note with the sum of the terminology. And... So that reached our discussion for this morning. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you understand the, the topic, which is blood. So this is the first lesson that uh, we've, be, we've discussed in finals. Thank you very much and have a nice day and a safe day today. Okay, thank you.